Coming up, Rock Wallabies give us the runaround. That one jumped straight over me. There's seals and spills on the high seas. Now there's rain, wind, and big seas. And if looks could kill. I don't want to go near that either. We got our wallaby gear. Most people go to the gym for exercise. But here at the Australian Reptile Park, we catch yellow-footed rock wallabies. This colony is due for their routine health check. But believe me, there's nothing routine about catching these agile marsupials. We got all the gear? Yeah, yeah. We got all the gear. Good. Let's get into it. Might just have a bit of a chat about how we're going to do it first. We'll probably all have the opportunity to catch one of the yellowfoots. If it doesn't go to plan and a roo gets out or, you know, you miss, it doesn't matter. Just let's settle, look at where we are, make sure the roos are safe. So our target is that little guy sitting right there. So that's getting to a size where we're risking mating with siblings. Cannot have that. All right, let's go and set up and catch these roos. Mating with siblings can cause serious genetic defects. Protecting bloodlines is a vital part of their captive management. And that's why we need to catch and microchip the joeys. Yellowfoots are perfectly designed for hopping along rock faces and cliffs. They've got long feet and a strong tail for balance. We don't stand a chance of catching them up there. OK, so let's use this corner. Let's use the angle. We'll just skirt those rocks there, and that way we'll push roos around right into this corner. You'll be coming in and catching your kangaroo right there. So what the guys are doing here is making a, a netting line. So what that enables us to do is bring the wallabies around the yard. Once they hit that netting, they're forced into a corner. We'll pick one or two wallabies at a time, that's all. It's safe for them, safe for us, and then we go in and catch. But with yellowfoot rock wallabies, nothing's easy. They can jump three or four metres straight up. We don't want one outside. How fast are they? Well, they're like bullets, and the only way to catch them is by their tail or with a net. Now, that doesn't hurt them at all. I just hope our reflexes are quick enough. This is a big operation. There's five keepers just to catch six wallabies. They're not easy. All right, with the netting set up, it's time to put this plan into action. OK, let's come around in a line. That's it, let's stay together. We've got two over here. OK, we've got two in, Drew. Hold that one there, mate. Just missed him. Here they come. Okay, we've got one down. That one jumped straight over me. They're hard. That's him. Ooh. It's okay, let him go. Well, it looks like things aren't exactly going to plan. We've had to call in another two keepers, reinforcements, the wallabies, giving us a hard time. Yes. Come in, guys. We've got one here. One right here. Close in. Andrew, come in. There we go. Got him. Watch your leg. Easy, Drew. Easy. Well done, mate. Hey. Are you all right, mate? Yeah, all good. <laughs> Thought you were a rock. Good on you. Well done, mate. Yeah, cheers. Putting the yellow foots in sacks is like putting them in mum's pouch. It's dark, comfortable, and won't stress them out. Um, OK, next one, guys. Same again. Come on. Come on. That's it. He's down. I'm in behind you, Drew. Oh. <laughs> Beat us all. <laughs> we got one. We caught one in the net. Missed the corner. Right. One, two, three. Where is he? Keep up, keep the line. Got him. Nice catch, Caroline. OK, good on ya. Three down, three to go. We've managed to pick a few off. They're not easy. The guys are doing really well. Two in net and one by hand. He's in here, so just um, let's hold back. Someone should support me a little bit more here. Just let me see if I can grab tail, I can.
Not even. Whoa. Okay. Whoa, what a catch. I think that deserves a replay. Got him. Whoa. Okay. Full of fire. One, two, three. I just managed to grab that little one by the tail. The reflexes were good. And that's how it happens sometimes. You set up a plan. We've got a good crash there, but we caught more of the wallabies opportunistically around the edges. You've got to take your opportunities. This is Tasman Island. It lies just off the southeastern tip of Tasmania, and it's a haven for wildlife. South of here is the Southern Ocean, a wild place where only the hardiest of animals and craziest of sailing venture. I'm heading out with Rob Pennicott, who runs wilderness cruises along the coast. Rob knows the waters around here better than most. He used to be a fisherman, but today he shows tourists the marvels of this spectacular coastline. This cave was formed over millions of years of wind and wave action, eating away at a weak point in the rock. That's scary. We're right in the cave. A big surge comes through like that. <laughs> Unbelievable. The cave's just massive. This is exhilarating stuff. Being able to get so close to the action like this is pretty special. Over there is the majestic Tasman Island. But there's one thing Rob wants to show me before we head out. The cliffs down here are staggering. At just over 300 metres, this is the highest sea cliff in the whole southern hemisphere. Their shape and structure is just amazing. The rock itself is Jurassic Dolerite, formed 165 million years ago when dinosaurs roamed the Earth. Now it's time to venture offshore. First stop, Tasman Island. It's of particular interest to Rob. He helped fund a Tasmania Parks and Wildlife Initiative to eradicate a certain feral pest from the island. It sits 500 metres off the Tasman Peninsula, and it's home to short-tailed shearwaters, sooty shearwaters, as well as fairy prions. The island's problem stems from its position. There was no GPS a century ago, so the best way of alerting ships to this massive rock was to put a lighthouse on top of it. That eventually became fully automated, but the lighthouse keepers left behind their cats. And they've gone on to become an established pest. So a few years back, Tasmania Parks and Wildlife set about eradicating the cats. The cats do have a place in Australia, and that's at someone's home as a pet, but not in the Australian environments, and especially not on a small island like that. They will eradicate every possible food source, and in this case, it's seabirds. Eventually, after a couple of years of research, the team were able to step into action. We had traps that we let cats come in and get very accustomed to yes. the traps. We did baits without poison, so yes. they got accustomed to eating that. And then one day, the poison was added. Then we got all bar eight cats on the yes. first night. And then in the next week, we got the last eight. Monitoring with specially trained cat detection dogs, camera traps, and good old fashioned leg work looking for evidence of cats continues to this day. And so what's happened? The cats are gone and you see an immediate response? That's right, it's quite incredible, compounding each year where it used to be this deep in dead birds with eggs in, yes. caves full of cats taking the birds. Yep. Now the fledglings are just all inside the caves yes. and in all the crevices. It's fantastic. In fact, today, the bird population is going through the roof on Tasman as populations appear to be having increased breeding success.
visit to the tropics in Queensland wouldn't be complete without an encounter with a certain scaly reptile. Up here is a scrub python. It's Australia's longest python. Right over my head and he's quick. This is a fruit tree. And it's pretty common to find them in fruit trees because this is where you get fruit bats. And he'll sit in here through the day. Now he's not doing much through the daytime, just staying cool in the shade here. When it gets dark, bang, snake's got to feed. And being a python, and I can see it here, there's big heat sensing pits along the top and bottom lips. And it's a constrictor. Young know, scrub pythons get big enough, well, maybe to kill a man, certainly a kid. And they get big because of the food they eat. Obviously, this one's eating bats, but they're known to eat wallabies, good sized wallabies. They swallow it whole. They constrict it, each time it breathes out, squeezes tighter until there's no breath left. He's looking down at me. He's just in the shade there. It's important for a big snake like this to stay cool through the middle of the day, not to warm up. That big body, if it gets too much sun, will overheat. And pretty strictly nocturnal. And this scrub, he's a smart one. He's here for an easy meal. OK, he's on the move. And I'm going to leave him right there. I don't want to disturb him too much. And that big head looking down at me. I don't want to go near that either. Unfortunately, the most common encounter people have with scrubbies is with the flat and lifeless kind. Lucky for this one, my eyes are peeled. I don't want to add to the numbers. I've just pulled over. This is a scrub python. That's in a bit of a dangerous situation because it's in the middle of the road. And you know, as big as that looks, it's only probably one year old. This is the longest Australian snake. Hello, mate. It's a bit of a cool night, but that tongue's flicking. It's out on the hunt. There's a heap of possums running around here. Now, it couldn't eat a big one just yet, but it certainly would take a small one. Oh, scrub pythons. They're cranky. This is a baby, but it's still having a strip. Oh, another one. Look at that. I'm too big for you, mate. Hey, don't you bite me, please. And again, that mouth opens. That's a big gape. That's only because it feels a bit threatened. My big car's just come past, and I've pulled up now, and now there's a big, warm-blooded mammal. And remember, scrub pythons have got heat sensor pits all around the top and bottom lip, so I'm glowing to that snake. But I'm not going to hurt him. I'm going to pick him up and take him just over there in the bush, where he's safe. Come on, mate. Now, how am I going to get... Hey, that's enough of that. You look that way, please. All right, thank you, mister. Look at that. Settle down, please, buddy. I don't want any bites. Are they... Pretty quiet, really. Oh, please. They're pretty gentle snakes. It's just on that road, he feels a bit threatened. Now let's go over to the side there. Whoop, 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 please. And you know something there, have a look at. Scrubbies are arboreal, meaning they mainly live in the tree. This snake's just crossing the road, going from one side to the other. Look at that. From the tip of its tail, it's able to hang off me. And they'll actually feed like that up in a fruit tree. They'll hang there by half their body, waiting for a fruit bat to come in and whack. Then they'll constrict. Oh, no, I want that head, please, buddy. There we go. Look at that position. I'm just about to take him off the road, but he's curled right up, ready to strike. It's all right, mate. I'm going to let you go now. All right, I want to get him right off up here in this vine thicket. Come on, mate. All right, mate, there you go. That body's so strong, just got his head on and wrapped around. That supported the rest of the body, and now he, the whole snake's going up the tree. There he is. Well, that's good. I'd much rather him there than squashed on the road. That's it, let's stay together. We've got two over here. Oh, got him! Whoa! At the Australian Reptile Park, my team and I are rounding up yellow-footed rock wallabies for a routine health check. Oh. It's OK. Let him go. They haven't made it easy. Oh. Oh. oh, unlucky, mate. But we're making progress. Drew's got him. Nice, mate. Well done. He was deep in there, hey? That's four down, two to go. Drew, there's one up there, mate. Nick, I'm going to bring him to you beyond that tree. Ready? 
Coming. Good catch, mate. Good catch. Got him there. Now grab your net again. Thanks, mate. So far, we've caught five out of six. The only one to go now is the juvenile, but it's doing what yellowfoot rock wallabies do best, and that's hiding in rock crevices. That's exactly what Mum would have taught it to do. Yellowfoots were nearly hunted to extinction, with several populations being wiped out. Young joeys are so important to the future. We must find this one to ensure that it's happy, healthy, and has its own identity. There he is. Got him, mate? Got ah, him. beautiful. That's it, number six. And look how small he is. So he's only a couple of months out of mum's pouch. Now's the right time for us to give him his own identity. All right. The reason we put them into the sacks is because all marsupials find it comforting to be dark and like they're in a pouch as a joey. So once we put him in there, like now, he's already settled. He'll be like he's back in mum's pouch. All six wallabies have been caught and are sitting comfortably in their sacks. First, we weigh them. 8.95. Then we scan for the microchip. The microchip is our way of identifying each individual animal. And that's really important because the population is managed genetically. We cannot have relatives breeding with each other. No, I can't find the chip. Um... It's the big boy. I mean, we've got scarring on the tail and, and, and it's our biggest yeah, yeah, it's male. Good. OK, I think we should just rechip. Yep, let's do it. Okay. We know this wallaby is our big dominant male, but we can't find its microchip. The scanner's not picking it up. Now, we've searched all over the back and shoulders where the chips are, uh, so the safest thing to do is just to put another microchip in. It's completely painless and only takes a second to put just under the skin, similar to what a vet would do for your dog or cat. Got him. Yep. Easy as that. This is the best bit, letting them go. Off you go. All right, time to check this guy's partner and mum of our Joey. Ah, uh, this is mum. There it is. Look at that teat. OK, and we've got good milk. Gland looks great. One, two, three inactive teats and one long teat. Wallabies are very different than kangaroos. They're always smaller. Uh, they're often very pretty and have far more defined markings than your larger kangaroos. Their legs are shorter uh, and their forearms are strong and stocky. And the base of the tail starts much closer to the ground. They're really agile, makes them hard to catch, but that's what makes them great. Bye, Mum. It's great to identify mum and just see that she's happy and healthy. Now I want to have a look at a baby, make sure he's the same way. Young male yellowfoots are often bullied by older males. It's another reason why we need to monitor this guy closely. Hey, let go, please. Look at that. Beautiful little boy. That's what it's all about for us. He's two and a half kilos, one year old. Now he's going to get his own identity. The future for this guy is helping his species. Yellowfoot rock wallabies are endangered. Now, he can't breed here in this group because his parents are here, but there are a number of institutions that hold yellowfoot rock wallabies. We work together to keep the species safe in captivity. I can see Mum looking down at him, so I'm going to let him go. He's going to hop right back up. Hey, don't bite me, please. I'm about to let you go. See you next time. Back in his cave, and Mum's just up on top. She's looking down now. Well done, guys. That's a real success. No worries, yeah. mate. It's good. Awesome. Let's hope we've got some more little ones in three months. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to leave you wrap up. Cool. See ya. This is Tasman Island, just off the southeastern tip of Tasmania. A successful feral pest eradication project on the island has seen its bird population returning to its natural state. There is another inhabitant on the island. No danger to the birds, they hang out down at sea level. Behind me is an Australian fur seal colony. Now they're one of the largest species of seals in the world. Now, there's a few young pups there, not too young, 
and mainly females, the big males that can get up to 360 kilos, they're off in the ocean somewhere. To get to that size takes a lot of eating. And when it comes to hunting, seals are the masters. And when a surge of water comes up, the seals will use that and jump into the water. And when they go under, they can hold their breath for five minutes. Now, underwater, they are supreme hunters. Their whiskers are so sensitive. They pick up little electronic pulses left by fish as they swim through the water. They can go down 200 metres to catch their prey, which, apart from fish, includes octopus and squid. But if you think it looks cold up here, it's nothing to the temperatures 200 metres down. But their bodies are well equipped. Now, the Australian fur seal has two layers of fur, and that's simply to help them stay insulated, to stay warm. Now, it's time to head out to the open ocean. Next stop, Antarctica. And if you're lucky, you might just get accompanied out to sea by a pod of dolphins. These are common dolphins, distinguished by that hourglass shape that runs the length of their body. They'll travel the oceans in groups that can number in the thousands, feeding on sardines, pilchards, anchovies, and other small fish. This is the Southern Ocean at its best. Five minutes ago, it was sunny and calm. Now there's rain, wind, and big seas. And Tasman Island, where we were, is covered in cloud. There are so many seabirds out here. There's shy albatross flying everywhere. Shearwaters, there's sooty shearwaters, short-tailed shearwaters, fluttering shearwaters. There are little storm petrels. Now, whilst the birds go to land to breed, they spend the main part of their life at sea. Those albatross, though, they're just impressive. In the winter months, you'll get the royal albatross with one of the biggest wingspans of any bird on Earth. But the main one here is the shy albatross. They're so graceful the way they just fly above the surface of that water. They only breed on three islands, which are all around Tasmania. Numbers plummeted in the early 1900s due to demand from the feather trade. Although it's still under threat from long-line fishing, shies can be seen scouring the seas right across the southern oceans. And today, numbers are on the rise. What a wonderful sight.